Detectives of Reddit, what are some of the creepiest cases you have worked on? Alright, detective now, but this happened when I was on patrol several years ago. Got a call to check the welfare of a guy whose neighbor hadn't seen him in a couple years. Why it took so long to report, but it was out in a rural area. Anyway, we roll up and the windows are black with mold and flies. Cars parked in the garage, no signs of forced entry. Breach the door and find said guy wrapped up in a phone cord beside a toppled chair in his dining room. He was mummified slash melting into the carpet, barely recognizable as a human aside from his shape and clothes. The smell of him mingled with the inches of stagnant water in his basement from burst pipes and all the dead flies and mold. I'll never forget it. We also found two bags of groceries neatly packed on the floor in his kitchen. House was very tidy as well. No witnesses, estranged from his family, clearly had a cat, but we never found its remains. Medical record indicating he had a heart condition. My theory is he was having a heart attack and tried to call 911, but never got to make the call. Perhaps the creepiest part? His mailbox was overflowing with past due bills and canceled utility notices. The last one was a couple of months old, and it still took someone that long to call. Detective here, attached to a coastal town with a fishing wharf, started work one day when we get a call from the water police who've responded to an abandoned boat floating off the coast. They have towed it into the bay where they requested our assistance and they would advise us further on arrival. We head down thinking someone had stolen the boat or something else routine. When we get there, we are told that no one went further than the entrance before it was sealed off as a crime scene. We have a quick look below the deck and see why. Three people, clearly dead with one slumped over the wheel, one on the floor and the other in a chair. No struggle, no injuries and nothing out of place. Completely silent other than the water on the hull and the fenders squeaking against the police launch. Turned out to be an accident. Lack of upkeep on the very old engine meant fumes leaked in and the three were poisoned, at which point the engine just ran until the diesel was gone. My brother, not me. I usually tell this long and dramatic, but here's the quick to the punch version. Schizophrenic woman reported being watched by ghosts at the abandoned funeral home. Turned out when investigating, someone or something, dum dum dum, was actually watching the people in her building and keeping crude logbooks of their coming and goings and left some of them in the place. My brother's theory was that they were discovered slash almost discovered and fled. Anyways, no idea what kind of crime was being planned, but the whole thing sounded creepy as fuck to me. Ex-insurance investigator here. The most unsettling arson case I worked was at the Masonic Temple in the historic Black Business District in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. This beautiful eight-story Renaissance Revival-style building was constructed in the 1920s and included a massive marble lobby and a grand, and I mean grand, ballroom. It also housed numerous black-owned businesses like tailors, dressmakers, attorneys, doctors, dentists, the NAACP, etc., etc. After integration and white flight, the business has closed or moved, resulting in the building becoming vacant with the exception of the still-functioning masons. Even though the building was heavily secured and guarded by a single security officer, it was still breached by squatters slash crackheads who managed to cause a fire on the third floor. That's where I came in. My job was to determine the source, cause, and extent of the fire damage. That meant exploring the entire building, which had no electricity because the fire department cut it until it was deemed safe to resume electrical services. The grand ballroom took up the entire second floor and luckily had no damage, so I just admired the exquisite millwork and decor. The third floor housed mostly professional offices some even contained their original mid-century furniture in pristine condition. The fourth floor, however, became darker. Literally darker. I used a flashlight to advance down the gloomy hallways and inspect every room. I found the NAACP office that was literally frozen in time, file cabinets and all. As I was moving down the second hallway, my eyes fixated on a large, looming structure in the far corner. 
I slowly made my way closer, nervous about what I would find. Finally, I was close enough to discover a fucking coffin, an old Dracula-style coffin, standing up at the end of the hall. I didn't dare touch it. As I ascended the building alone, each floor proved darker and gloomier than the one before, even though each floor had the same amount of windows. And the further up I moved, the more fucking coffins I found. In the middle of offices, in closets, blocking doors from the inside, it made no sense until I got to the top floor. There, I found only two businesses, a coffin company, and the Order of the Eastern Star. I had an overwhelming feeling that I absolutely should not be there, especially not snooping around the OES Lodge. I snapped a few pics, then bolted down the hall and hit the stairwell to the lobby. The only area I hadn't inspected was the basement, and I wasn't sure my nerves were up to it. I discovered a full fallout shelter down there, hundreds of drums of community shelter supplies, water, food, medical supplies, radiation detectors, everything. The whole building was a massive time capsule, and I felt like I went back in time just being there. That was definitely my most interesting and spooky investigation. Not a detective, but a forensic computer examiner for my local sheriff's department. I work closely with detectives and do lots of investigative work, so I feel I can accurately contribute to the conversation. Despite what the title suggests, a lot of my work is actually based on cell phone dumps. I once got a request from a detective to dump a guy's phone because he was attempting to sell our county jail jumpsuits. Don't ask me why. I wouldn't know why anyone would want to buy one or how he even got a hold of one. So I did what I'm supposed to and dumped his phone's data into a report for the detective to go through. Problem was, there was way more on the phone than what we had bargained for. Turns out the guy was really into underaged girls, to the point that he had thousands of images of child porn on the device. So I called the detective up and informed him that he was going to need another warrant to cover the CP for the device. So he did, and began creating a CP case against the guy. Several days later, it was time for the guy's prelim hearing for the county jumpsuit sales. He left the courthouse after the hearing and was immediately rearrested for the CP violations. He had a backpack on him with three more phones in it. I was given said phones to dump for the new CP case, same amount of CP on all three devices as on the first one. This wasn't necessarily a super creepy bone chilling case, but it sure as hell makes you realize how much of that stuff is actually out there and it's hidden in plain sight a lot of the time. This happened when I was a newer cop on patrol long before I became a detective. I was working midnights in a neighborhood with a high violent crime rate and we got sent to a dispute at a bar. This wasn't just any bar, we always refer to it as the Star Wars Cantina because it was always a shit show. We stopped a rape in progress in the dirt alley behind the same bar not long after this. I was working with a female that night. We make our way through the bar systematically booting people out and get to the bathrooms. I open the door to the men's room and it's empty, single stall bathrooms. My female partner goes to open the women's bathroom door but it's locked. She knocks on the door and a female says, I'll be out in a minute. We advise her that the bar is closing, bars close at 4am in New York. After a couple of minutes, we begin to grow impatient. Female partner knocks on the door again, and the female agrees to open the door. When she comes out, we ask her what took so long. She's not providing any substance in her answers. She's wearing tight yoga pants, and we notice that she has a large bulge in the back of her pants slash crouch. We believed she was either doing drugs in the bathroom and shoved the rest in her pants, or that it was a weapon. When we question her about it, she's very evasive and won't answer us female partner begins to search her. As she pulls back the female's pants and shines her flashlight down to look, my partner says, fuck. She sees a baby arm sticking out from the female's vagina and up through her ass crack. This chick had been drinking and smoking crack all day. She had a stillborn and continued to stay at the bar and drink slash smoke crack. When the ambulance arrived, they went back into the bathroom with the female and pulled the rest of the baby out of the female and into the toilet bowl. The baby was completely formed, except it never formed a head. It was just sunken in around the neck. I've seen some crazy shit in my career, like brutal homicides, etc., but that one always stands out the most. 
I have a couple that I was tangentially involved with. First one that comes to mind was this kid, smart kid, Chinese student coming to America for school on an engineering scholarship, I believe, was dating a girl during undergrad, but they broke up so he could go to grad school at an Ivy League. She started talking to someone else a while after they broke up, and he caught wind of it. He bought an airsoft gun and some knives online. Next day, Air shipped them to his apartment, drove back to where his ex lived, and staked out her house, taking meticulous notes about the comings and goings. When his ex was home, when her roommate was home. He went and knocked on the door when just the roommate was home, brandished the airsoft gun like it was a BB gun, and negotiated his way in. He bound and gagged the roommate and waited for his ex to get back. When she finally got back, he forced her at gunpoint to sit in a chair, where he tied her up and taped over her mouth. He stabbed her in the neck once and then just stared at her, expecting that to kill her instantly like a movie or video game. When it didn't, he stabbed her, I don't know how many more times, but a lot more. To me, the creepy part is the level of planning he did. I can understand a crime of passion, but this was so dispassionate. To have enough time to order your murder weapons online and have them delivered, then drive hours to the destination of your murder and plan it out, and at no point get the feeling that you shouldn't follow through with this act, to me, that's the sign of a true sociopath. I used to work with a retired LAPD beat cop of 30 years in his retirement fun money gig working on an ambulance. He told me this story that sent chills down my spine. He pulls over the sedan for expired tags and neither the driver or passenger has any paperwork driving illegally and they're both acting shady as fuck. So he calls for backup, detains them and searches the car. He finds two dead young teenage girls in the trunk. They're naked, bound and gagged and had been mutilated and there was tons of devices obviously meant for torture. He calls in the homicide detectives, and the cavalry comes. The two guys are hauled away to jail, and his day wraps up after all the normal procedures and paperwork have been filed. And he says that was the last he ever heard of that case. Nothing. No subpoenas. No testimony to a grand jury. No interviews for the homicide detectives. No stories in the paper. Nothing. He said it wasn't his normal area, and didn't know the other cops and detectives that showed up, so that it's possible it just got lost in the enormity of the LA justice system. But he always wondered if there wasn't some shady shit going on. Detective here, one of the few on Reddit it would appear, had a sexual assault job a few years back. Woman went to a fancy dress party, attacked on her way home. Doing enquiries on the street we luck out, find this neighbor with a CCTV, Capture the guy jumping her and dragging her onto a front lawn. She was wearing a little red riding hood costume, so she was easy to spot. She'd been drinking, couldn't remember how she got home. Checking possible routes, we find a rundown house complex nearby and found more CCTV of her stumbling home alone, hood up, headphones in. She's oblivious when he suddenly appears from the shadows behind her, watching her, hiding behind corners, then following her again. He keeps getting to within touching distance of her and then backing off. Perp has a black, furry, hooded coat up over his head, is completely covered head to toe, looks like a wolf. Whole thing very surreal. Anyway, that wasn't the creepiest thing. We managed to trace her back to a well-known fast food place a few blocks away. Turns out Wolfman was in there for over two hours before she walked in, loitering in the queues bailing out at the last minute, standing in the corner, watching girls come in. Guy was waiting for his perfect target, but he didn't believe his luck. Some of the creepiest footage I've ever seen was of when she walks in. Restaurant had HD footage. I'm not shitting you. He was licking his lips, didn't take his eyes off her once, followed her out. The rest, we already knew. 